तत्परमेदे ज्ञानलिंगेश्वर धीमह तो गु प्रचोदय ओम योग महर्षि डॉक्टर स्वामी गीतानंद गिरी गुरु महाराज की जय नमस्ते स्वागत वनक नमस्कार द लास्ट फ्यू डेज आई बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ ए लॉट एंड इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग दैट वी आर कमिंग इन टू द फुल मून विच स्टार्ट दिस इवनिंग इन गोज टिल टुमोरो and this full moon is very special in this part of the world because it is vyasa guru purnima or in tamil we call it pavnami the purnima or the pavnami is this full moon and this is the moon on which swamiji was born the full moon the vyasa guru purnima hence uh, we celebrate it every year in a very special way and last night we started off with a beautiful celebration thanks to divya's global voices with my dear italian geetananda yoga family at the mata geetananda ashram and a beautiful satsang with yoga ratna swami ji yogananda giri hamsananda ji ma uma shakti and her shakti filled bhajans Priyananda with his Madangam, and all my dearest of dear Italian yoga family, uh, such a such a loving family. Uh, it was so beautiful last night to have that uh, version of my dear Italian yoga family. Tomorrow is the ninety ninth. session and i will uh, use it to discuss a bit about swamiji being the vyasa purnima and it would be swamiji's 113th birthday his actual birthday is july 24 and uh, but still every year we have been celebrating the guru purnima and because of the lockdown we are not able to have the usual music and bhajans we have from all our yoganjali children at kamli swami madam but we do with what we have tomorrow also we'll have amma ji's satsanga in the global voices with divya priya and it will be uh, a good opportunity for again people to connect with amma ji to me the most amazing woman i know someone who is truly a living siddha no doubt about that but that's for tomorrow tonight we have a special session with my dear shobhana from czech republic and that's also very special so look forward to all of that one of the things that many people have been asking me is as i've been talking about mental health recently is that we have these two diametrically opposite aspects at least they seem diametrically opposite and these are the dwandvas the two twos that always come together you always have shita ushna as the bhagavad gita tells us he gives a whole list of these mana apamana shita ushna and you have all these opposites that are constantly pulling us away they are the manifestation of raga dvesha at the klesha level they are always pulling us away from balance because both the opposites pull us away from balance and yoga is all about the middle path the golden mean that is why sthita pragya sthita pragya as given in the bhagavad gita is sort of i would say the yogic ideal 
or where we need to find that balance in the center. When we talk about mental health, two aspects that are always sort of seen are anxiety and depression. And in fact, in most of us, it is sort of a spectrum between anxiety and depression and we keep on moving up and down the spectrum, which is theoretically called as bipolar disorder. Bipolar Affective Disorder, BPAD, is the technical term given to it. And in my very limited personal opinion, I believe that all human beings are basically bipolar. Um, I, I think that it's an inbuilt system that we are all BPAD uh, at some level or the other. It is just the spectrum may be a bit different in some of us as opposed to somebody else. And that's nothing wrong. You don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to feel, oh my God, I am so bad and go into that self-depreciating whirlpool. It is just that's what nature is. Nature has the opposites. And so these tend to manifest in us as anxiety and depression. And recently we concluded a study with the Department of Psychiatry in our hospital. And it was a study based on patients admitted uh, and who were being treated for depression. And even in people who have depression, there is a lot of anxiety also. It's not that it's pure depression. And what was interesting is that in the control group, which was only receiving medication, though the improvements in the depression scales were there, the anxiety scales were not improving as much as when yoga was added to it. So yoga was actually helping the person be less depressed and be less anxious at the same time. And this is a very beautiful concept about yoga because People tend to think that you have to find one asana, one pranayama. And one of the major reasons why modern research in traditional systems has failed is modern research is always looking for what they call the active principle. So instead of saying traditionally, they would people would say an apple is good for you. An apple or an orange or a lemon is good for you. And modern science wants to say, what is the active principle in the apple, in the orange, in the lemon that is good for you? It's this reductionist attitude. And they want to find that active principle, put it in a capsule, market it and sell it to you. Often it is not about this active principle at all. It may be the inactive part that may also be playing an important role in helping you. Because when you eat the apple, it's not just the active principle of the apple, which may be a vitamin, a mineral or something like that. But the mass of the apple that when you eat enables you to have a healthy bowel movement and clear out the mala, the mala shodhana, the mala kriya and be less constipated may be as important to your overall health as that so-called active principle. And when you have it in a capsule, you may have that vitamin, you may have that mineral, you may have that active principle substance, but now you don't have the bulk. And they say, no problem, here have another teaspoon of bulk. Why not just have the apple in the first place? No, 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 that's not scientific. This is the same problem when modern research has been done in yoga. We are always looking for that one practice that is going to do it. Which type of meditation does it? Which type of pranayama does it? 
how many times do you have to do it? Because this is how we work. How we work is that there is a dosage for that medicine. And so we want to find what is the dosage for the yoga. It's a, it's a, it's a big, 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 big struggle. So coming back, when we are talking about anxiety and depression, anxiety can very much be correlated with the right nostril, what is called Pingala Nadi and Surya Nadi. And the depression is more related to the Ida Nadi, the Chandra Nadi. The right nostril is connected to the left brain. Remember this crisscross? Right nostril is connected to the left brain. Left nostril is connected to the right brain. Right nostril to the left brain, left nostril to the right brain. Remember that crisscross all, always. So what is the left brain all about? The left brain is all about quantitative analysis. How can I get some more money? How can I be in a better position in life? How can I have a bigger car than my neighbor? How can my house so be so big? Huh? Like the Ambani's, that it is so big that everybody is like, how, how, oh, look at that. See, it doesn't matter how big your house is, you can only sleep in one bed at one time. There was a spiritual teacher who had a huge, I think it was something like 97 Rolls Royce cars. And I used to wonder, you can only travel in one car at one time. Why have 97? You can only sleep in one bed at one time. What is the use of having a 25 bedroom house? Um, some things are beyond my comprehension and I'm very limited in that. Sorry for that. There was a very beautiful movie in Tamil many years ago, a couple of decades ago. And one of our comedy actors, Nagesh, he acted in that. Nirku movie. Adi adangum, varkayeda, aradi nilave, sundamadha. Adi adangum, varkayeda, aradi nilave, sundamadha. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do in the end, you get that six feet of space for your body. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are doing this, that and everything and at the end, what you have that six feet of space for your body. Eh? Isn't that amazing? Eh? When you die, you cannot be buried in a 300 square feet area. Six feet, if you are buried. And if you are cremated, all you need is one small jar for the ashes, asti. Huh? The asti <laughs> in a small pot. See, the left brain is always trying to quantify everything. Relationships are quantified in what can I get from that relationship. You meet somebody and the first question is what can I get from them? That is your left brain. The right brain is always about creativity, artistic, music. And what happens is it usually never has anything. Because what has happened is the right brain, the right brain is so interested in the qualitative aspect that often quantity may not be there. And that is why there is a beautiful statement. When you are totally in your left brain, when you are totally in your left brain, there is nothing right about it. And when you are totally in your right brain, there may be nothing left. This is why yoga wants balance. Neither left dominant, neither right dominant. You want a balanced personality. You don't want type A, you don't want type B. You want that balanced personality. Yoga is all about balance. Samatvam Yoga Uchate. And that is why the concept of Yukta is brought out in the Bhagavad Gita. Yukta Hara Viharasya. Yukta Cheshtasya Karmasu. Yukta Swapna Vabodasya. 
yogo bhavati dukkha ha it is in that balance that everything is there in that balance is where everything lies in the yukta an integrated balanced state of integrity when all your activities are balanced now what happens is we have imbalance and when the left brain is dominant it is the right nostril what is happening is you start to have anxiety what if i don't get a salary this month what if i lose my job what if i lose my house because what has happened is you are quali quantitizing quantitizing that's a new word i think okay you are quantitizing everything that is there and because you have quantified everything you are afraid of losing it because if i have it it means i can lose it left wing and so that's where anxiety comes in so anxiety is very much a left brain dominant overactive rather even more than dominant an overactive left brain right nostril is sort of the anxiety manifestation then what is depression manifestation it is the right brain because what happens is you get so involved in your creativity your creativity your creativity you get into this astounding place that heaven and then the concert finishes and you land back on earth with a thud as one of my dearest mentors in music told me once after an amazing concert whenever i listen to him singing i i cry i just sit in front of him he is on the stage i sit in front of him at his feet and i just cry such beautiful music and tv is uh, such a beautiful human being he is he said ananda when i'm singing he is my manasika sangeeta guru okay we haven't had chances to have direct lessons much but he is my manasika sangeeta guru and he said ananda when i'm singing i'm i'm some place else it's a beautiful place and he says when the concert ends i have to come back and land with a hard thud on this earth i think every creative genius has had that issue because what happens is that you you your creativity your right brain can take you into such an amazing place it can take you into such an amazing place and then what happens you have to face reality you don't have the money to pay this month's rent you don't have the money to pay your school fees for your kids and what happens depression starts to come in that is why an overactive right flow anxiety and overactive left flow depression this is why yoga doesn't want overactivity of either the right or the left it is in the balance that health lies because what happens is that the extreme of anything can never be healthy in tamil we say alavukku meerinal amrutamum nanjagum that is even the amrita which is the nectar of immortality when you take too much of it it can become poison even nectar can be poison in extreme the modern tendency is if a little bit is good take more and take the most because the more you take the better and then you kill yourself hmm? little bit of honey in the morning is nice okay if you drink a whole bottle of honey you won't have the rest of the day because you'll spend it in your toilet because the honey is a laxative hmm? <laughs> most probably in a diabetic coma from all the sugar that goes up in your system hmm? a teaspoon two teaspoons of honey is excellent in the morning not a whole bottle that is why what we need to understand is too much of 
push and too much of pull. Again, abhyasa vairagya. Think of abhyasa as the right, vairagya as the left. Too much of only abhyasa, 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 my yoga, my yoga, my yoga, my yoga, and you kill yourself. There are so many people who are so focused on their yoga that they forget that the yoga may be, may be just taking care of the family. And then there are others, Vairagya, I'm going to let go. And you go to the other extreme. People used to come to my father and, Swamiji, I want to take sannyas, I want to renounce everything, I want to let go of everything, give up everything. My father would say, what do you have in the first place to give up, give it up? Do you have a house? No. Do you have a family? No. Do you have a job? No. You don't have anything and you want to give it up. He said, first you have to go and earn something. You have to earn something and then you have the right to give it up. When you haven't earned it in the first place, what are you giving up? People want this escapism. Yoga is not an escapism. It is an anti-escapism. It is a responsibility, not an escapism. And this is why the right and the left balance. So what do we do? We do the right nostril breathing. We then do the left nostril breathing. So when you do the right nostril breathing, what are you doing? Activating. When you do the left nostril breathing, what are you doing? Deactivating. And what are you doing? You are creating a beautiful balance. That is the Loma Viloma. Beautiful balance is created. So if somebody is to some extent balanced and wants to maintain, sustain that balance. What is very, very important? What is very important is that you start with the right nostril. So either you could use the Vishnu Mudra, which I have described earlier, where this middle finger is helping you focus on the Sushumna, the central canal. And these fingers are used for understanding. Mm, the right and left, and these are reminding you of the pingala and the ida flows. Or if you are used to the nasika mudra, you can do that. Closing the left nostril, you are going to be doing the breathing in the right side. Then after a few rounds of that, you can do, do close the right nostril and do the left nostril pranayama. So, Surya Nadi, maybe nine rounds. Chandra Nadi, nine rounds. You have created a balance between the right and the left. And then you work on the central axis. How can you do that? We have the Chakra Pranayama, the Shat Chakra Pranayama, where what you are doing, as you breathe in, you are visualizing the energy moving from the base of the spine through the Moolada, Swadhista, and Manipur, Anahata, Vishuddha, and up to the Ajna. And as you breathe out from the Ajna to the Vishuddha, to the Anahata, to the Manipura, to the Swadhisthana, to the Mulada. And you have this breathing in, two, three, four, five, six. Breathing out, two, three, four, five, six. You remember we discussed this Shat Chakra or Chakra Pranayama that then becomes a Chakra Dhyana through the Dharana process. So the Pranayama preparing you for the dharana, dharana sucha, yogyata manasa. So the chakra pranayama preparing you for the chakra dharana that then prepares you for chakra dhyana and then that final inhalation you take, go up to the top of the head and then you let it out into this thousand petal sahasrara and you have a beautiful meditative awareness of that highest center that is connected to the cosmos. So what have we done? Right nostril, when you do the Surya Nadi, what are you doing? The right nostril is being worked on. When you do the Chandra Nadi, the left nostril, so the Pingala and the Ida are being balanced. And once you have brought them into balance, you are moving up and down the Sushumna and creating that beautiful state of balance which is there.
So a very good way to work on this practice is first do nine rounds of the right, nine rounds of the left, and then you do nine rounds of the chakra pranayama and then end up with a period of sitting with the consciousness at the top of the head. Now, this is for somebody who has some level of balance. But most of the time, people who are coming are already imbalanced. In fact, I think most of the people coming to yoga today are imbalanced. And this is why yoga as a therapy has become more popular. And even in a general yoga class, people end up with more of therapeutic needs. Which is why people want to keep this distinction between yoga teaching and yoga therapy. Which to me is very artificial. Because it's a very artificial distinction and people are trying to say because there is a professional relationship as if in yoga teaching there is no professional relationship. And people keep on trying to divide it. I think we have to realize yoga therapy is that small circle inside the big circle of yoga. So you cannot really make a clear cut demarcation. People want to do it for the sake of business. People want to do it for the sake of identity as a yoga therapist. Because they feel a yoga therapist is of a higher stature than a yoga teacher. Huh? Again, it's an ego-based uh, aspiration. Our aspiration should just be the best we that we can be and help as many people be the best they that they can be. That is the highest aspiration if you ask me. What do you call yourself? In fact, most of the time when I've been traveling the world, if people ask me, what do you do? I just say I'm a medical doctor because it's easier for them to understand what a medical doctor does. If you say I'm a yoga teacher or a yoga therapist, uh, oh my God, you never know what, what they think it is. So sometimes it's, it's better to just keep quiet. That's why Dakshina Murthy Shiva teaches in silence. This distinction is something that one has to really look at and hopefully in the next week or so I hope to have a nice conversation with two of my dear friends uh, Matthew Taylor and Stefan and uh, we'll share it with you when we have this conversation on what is this thing yoga therapy huh? what is it because I, I think I think there's just a lot of confusion out there people think being a yoga therapist is being superior to a yoga teacher. I don't think so. Again, there are people who think yoga therapist has to have a medical degree. As someone told me, BKS Iyengar cannot be considered a yoga therapist because he was not a medical doctor. And you are a medical doctor, so we'll accept you as a therapist. Uh, for God's sake, having a medical degree has nothing to do with being a yoga therapist, okay? Uh, but we, we really... Uh, really, really struggle with that. So most people who are coming are already imbalanced. So people who are very anxious, if you start having them do the right nostril, you may increase the anxiety. And this is why I was telling you, if the person is to some level balanced, you do nine rounds on the right, nine rounds on the left, and then nine rounds of the chakra pranayama dharana dhyana. But if the person is already anxious, you may have to start at another point. And that is where you may have to start on doing only the left nostril breathing. If somebody is very anxious, you may have to first help them find a sense of balance by doing Chandranadi Pranayama. You may do nine rounds. Usually what I like to suggest is start off with nine, then build it. 12, 15, 18, come up to 27. And once you have built up to the capacity of 27, do not start off 27 on the first day. For God's sake, please do not do that. You are going to harm people. Start off with 9. 9 is a very decent number of rounds to do, a couple of minutes. Then you build it to 27 rounds. So somebody who has a lot of anxiety, the left nostril, Chandranadi Pranayama, is the starting point. Not, not that for the rest of their life they have to only do Chandra Nadi Pranayama. Do not condemn people to that. But they need to start at a place which is Chandra Nadi Pranayama, working with the left nostril predominant breathing, 
nine rounds initially, build it up to twenty-seven, and then if they can do it, twenty-seven in the morning, twenty-seven around lunch time, twenty-seven in the evening, you get at least three times a day. You are building up the endurance of the person and the resilience, the endurance, the resilience, and you are creating a balance because they are so anxious, they are so much in the left brain that you need to sort of shift them a little bit. Imagine they are they are they are out here, and what you have to do is from here you have to bring them to here. So what you need to do is that you know you you need to have this, and that is why the left nostril breathing is doing that. Because what is the left nostril breathing? The person is here. Okay, imagine the person is here, and if you get confused, this is because the phone mirrors it. When I put it on YouTube, I usually reverse it. So I reverse it and put it on YouTube, and so I am touching my left. Left side. The person is predominantly in the left. That is the anxiety. What you need to do is you need to shift them to the center. Okay, this is what you want to do. So you do the left nostril breathing, which is to the the left nostril goes to the right, and hence you are pulling the person. It's like you are pulling the person here to balance. And that is why you do that to get them to balance. And once you get them to balance, you can go back to plan A. What was plan A? Nine rounds of right, nine rounds of left, and then nine rounds of the chakra pranayama. So you have to first bring them to that place, that equitable position. Equity has to be there. Now the other extreme, people who are very depressed. What has happened? They are totally more in this. This is what's happening more. Now what do you want to do? You want to help the person come here. So from here you have to pull them back to the center balance. So here is where you would be using the right nostril. So the right nostril is done, starting with nine rounds, then building to twenty-seven, then building to twenty-seven twice a day or thrice a day or even up to four times a day, which then makes it hundred and eight a day if you can get them to that. Pulling them from here to the center balance, and then you come back to your original plan A. Right, left, center. This is the way you have to approach the individual. So, just to keep it simple, we are going to continue this over the next few days. So, don't worry, we will continue it. Today is just exploration of it, because if somebody is very anxious and there's a lot of anxiety, anxiety neurosis, they need more of the left nostril breathing to help shift them from anxiety to a state of balance. If somebody is very depressed. They may need the right nostril to shift them from the depressed state to a state of balance. Then, once you get them to a state of balance, you have to redo your plan, go back to the other plan, and the next step is where you are helping them retain that balance. First, they have to attain the balance. People have lost the balance, so you have to help them attain the balance. Once you have attained that balance, then to sustain and maintain that balance, the rest of the sadhana comes in. Enough for today. We continue with our sessions tomorrow, and we'll take this further because this is a very important, simple tool. The right and left for mental health, I think, is such an important tool that we need to share it with people, especially in times of COVID-19. There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of depression. There are a lot of mental health issues that are not being addressed, and that is why. Along with the COVID pandemic, we have the fear psychosis pandemic, and the mental health pandemic is going to be a major, major issue that we have not been even thinking about yet. Which is where yoga definitely has a major, major place to play, and bring yoga into your life, bring it into other people's lives, help people be the best they that they can be. That is the way that you become the best you that you can be. Fulfilling your dharma, your purpose, your responsibility as a caring and sharing human being. Hari Om Tat Sat.